Hi, Jamie Davis from The Nursing Show, back with another segment from the American Association of Critical Care Nurses Conference, NTI 2013. I'm here with Nancy Albert. She is the 2013 Distinguished Research Lecturer. Very good, yes. And uh, first off, I want to congratulate you on that. How excited were you to be awarded that? Extremely excited, very honored. It's a great honor to have this award. Um, it's only given out once a year, and there are so many wonderful people that are deserving, so it was very wonderful to be chosen. You know, I always ask uh, for the benefit of my audience, especially all the student nurses I have out there, if you'd give us a, a picture of your path in nursing, how you decided to become a nurse, and how you arrived to where you are today, so that they can kind of get a glimpse at what their career might look like. Well, I decided to become a nurse when I was in high school and started off as a critical care nurse, medical, surgical, intensive care unit, and really worked in that arena for about 14 years. Switched to ambulatory care, realized I really loved critical care and I really loved the cardiac system. So switched to a, a major medical center, the Cleveland Clinic, uh, back in 1990, was the nurse manager of their coronary intensive care unit. So I got to live and eat and breathe cardiac patients um, and really enjoyed that a lot. And then started moving away from management into a role as a clinical nurse specialist as I went back to school and got more educated. And while I was doing the clinical nurse specialty role, I started realizing the importance of research mm -hmm. and how that plays into evidence-based practice and what we do day in and day out. And I don't know, I just took to it. I just love research. So I have a great passion for getting answers to questions and um, figuring out how that relates to nursing and what the implications are. And, and I really think that it's the nurse researchers out there that are really innovating patient care and, be, and implementing better um, practices for better outcomes. Very true. You know, one of the great things about research is you get to ask questions about things that aren't today. They're not, they're the abyss, they're unknown. And so you get to find out if what your thoughts are really pan out and become important or if it's just a dud. Um, but it's that unknown piece that really leads to new innovation and new ways of looking at how we take care of patients. So tell us a little bit about your, your presentation and uh, some of the research you've been doing. I understand you're really looking into uh, improving outcomes for our uh, heart failure patients. That's correct. Um, my patient population is heart failure and this is a very sick group of patients. They don't have a long lifespan and I'm always trying to figure out ways to improve their lives and the lives of their families. And so my research really focuses on helping nurses to do a better job of um, educating patients about their condition and also helping patients to uh, carry out what we call self-care behaviors. Mm -hmm. Those things like exercise and diet and fluid management and weighing yourself and trying to really figure out how they can do it better, how mm -hmm. they can do it right, and what it really means to them when they do all of that in terms of living a better life, better quality of life, less symptoms, and then maybe even staying out of the hospital. And what, is it, what, are, what are some of the key interventions that nurses can do to, to encourage uh, some of those lifestyle changes? Well, one of the things we know about our patients with heart failure is even though physicians do a great job of giving basic education, it's very broad in scope. Mm -hmm. Things like you need to quit smoking, mm -hmm. you need to be on a low sodium diet, but patients do not know how to live that. So what nurses can really do is do a, a much better job of teaching patients how and what and why um, versus just to do, and so they need to have enough knowledge themselves so that they can give those kind of messages. And then on the patient's end, we really need to get patients to understand that even though they may not be having symptoms today, that their heart is still big and it's still in trouble, and that even though they're feeling fine, they still need to carry out these behaviors. Oftentimes patients feel, well, I'm, not, I'm feeling great, so I don't need to follow my diet. I don't need to take all of my medications. But in heart failure, that's not the case. And in the next day, I mean, it only takes uh, you know, one day off their sodium levels are, are whacked out, and then suddenly they're, they're, they've gained a lot of weight, they're retaining a lot of right. fluid. Right, and, and today it's really tough on us because uh, the Affordable Care Act is going on in America, and if the patient is rehospitalized within 30 days of a previous hospitalization mm -hmm. for heart failure, that hospital may lose money. And so hospitals in general are gearing up to trying to figure out how they can keep patients at home and keep them well. And so I think what nurses do day in and day out can make a difference if they do it right. How important is, I mean, kind of shift gears, we're here at a critical care nursing conference, but you're talking about some things that have to happen after they leave the hospital. Right. Uh, how important is coordination with that home care nurse? 
Um, coordination with care period is very important. So it may not always be a home care nurse. It may be a doctor's office that's miles away, and so the patient's not seeing the same doctor after they leave the hospital. Mm -hmm. It may be the home care office. It may be a skilled nursing facility. Um, it could be many different arenas, but one of the things that are really important right now is care coordination and collaboration and really good communication between care providers from the hospital into whatever that next setting is. Any final thoughts for uh, our audience our, of nurses that uh, you'd like them to take away about caring for these very difficult patients with heart failure? Um, I'd like to say that I think there are some new drugs coming down the pipeline. Um, some of them are going to be used in a critical care setting, um, and then we need to figure out what happens after that critical care segment goes away and keeping the patient um, in a better state for the next 60 or 90 or 180 days and keeping them out of trouble. So I think it's a very exciting time, and I think we may be seeing some new therapies down the road. So stay tuned, I guess I'd say. Stay tuned. And, and nursing research is going to be right in the middle of that. I hope so, yes. Fantastic. Well, Nancy, again, congratulations on your award, and thank you for sharing some time with us here on The Nursing Show to uh, tell us what's going on in, in care for heart failure patients and in critical care. Great. Thanks so much for having me today, Jamie. And I want to thank all of you. Continue to follow what we're doing here at NTI 2013. I'm Jamie Davis. As always, remember to stay safe and stay tuned here to The Nursing Show. All our video segments here from NTI 2013 are brought to you through the generous support of PhysioControl and their true CPR tool. It's a coaching and management tool for CPR. It gives you real-time feedback. It's simple to use and it lets you perform high-quality compressions, giving you accurate depth measurement and accurate reporting on the compression fraction and the time on the chest. All of that brought to you by PhysioControl. You can find out more information by heading over to physio-control.com and check out the new True CPR.